Hello and welcome to Manny Beal. I thought I would um, add a few comments to a, a game I'm playing at the moment just to talk about something else than my usual sort of uh, suspects of philosophy, the usual suspects. Um, I've always been a fan of a game series called uh, Dark Souls. And there's a few other spin-offs like uh, Demon Souls and Bloodborne and also a game called Sekiro, which I have actually not played. There's, a, there, there's there are three incarnations of Dark Souls, Dark Souls 1, 2 and 3, of which I have played 1 and 3, not 2, very little in the beginning and I thought it wasn't very good. So I have never been, I never attempted going back to Dark Souls 2. But I actually might do that just for, 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 for the shits and giggles. But the original company who made the, the, the Souls series uh, did not make Dark Souls 2 as far as I'm concerned. So, so that is a, sort of a, a minus, right? And there's a particular um, a developer called Miyazaki who is uh, responsible for these types of Souls games. And the, 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 the most recent incarnation is a game called Elden Ring which supposedly is sort of a conglomeration of all the best stuff of previous games uh, coalesced into a um, an open world scenario and uh, this of course is a, a major sort of a major point also a major selling point you could say it's sort of the uh, the new black of gaming Um, uh, open world is sort of if you have a linear game, which is usually the the, the, the setup in these types of uh, first-person uh, shooter or, or or you know uh, action adventure whatever role-playing games. Uh, open world is more like you are placed in a big 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 sandbox and you can basically sort of get around at, at your liking. Um, but the, the usual problem with these open world games is that there needs to be s some reason to go around exploring. And, and that reason is usually some kind of linear story, or at least a set of linear stories. So there's a, usually a big complication around w with open world games that they need to have some kind of linear story to give you some kind of incentive to keep going in that open world, which is not by default is not linear and um, this is sort of a problem that all open world games have to battle with and I sense that after playing a sort of a, I don't know maybe maybe at least 50 hours of the game but maybe more right? I'm not I'm not really sure I have restarted uh, or, or restarted a figure like four times until I found one I was sort of satisfied with uh, using. Um, and it's, um, they are trying to, in my opinion, settle between some, somewhere, sort of a, a, a fusion of a, a, a linear game with, well, how should I put it? constructed in such a way that it feels like an open world game but I would argue that it's it's actually still still a linear game there are areas where you sort of can you can sort of roam around but there there are always sort of cliffs and and unpenetrable areas where you will die you will fall to your death or something that sort of channels your way around the area so it becomes more linear right it's not just a, one big open where you can go in any direction at any point, but it's sort of you're channeled through the, the, the specific zones uh, by by sort of physical limitations like like very steep cliffs or, or a big uh, sort of um, uh, area where, where you could fall to your death or something like that. So it's sort of natural way through the zone that is actually a kind of a linear structure. So I'm not I'm not particularly uh, 
I'm not quite sure whether or not I like this approach because if it doesn't really work with an open world where you can just go around doing whatever you want why not just stick with the linear approach right because otherwise you you have to do which is also one of the weaknesses of the game in my opinion that there are certain areas that seem to be sort of there's no really reason to go there other than it has to be there because it's this sort of open world thing so it's um it's 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 something that looks like an open world which is more like actually a a more linear type of game and there's also okay now we are in the in the the forest region and now we are in the swamp region and now we are in the ice region and so on so the, it's basically sort of a bunch of zones that are actually just placed near each other so you can venture to some degree between them but there's sort of a big lake in the middle where you can go for there's certain zones you have to go through to get to other particular zones so there's sort of a linear structure in it anyway right so this open world thing is not really that much of an issue or a, 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 an asset or it's more like something that it has to sound like it's open world but it's really very linear in its in its in its way that if, if, if you um, if you took the the zones that you actually you st the starting zone and the next obvious zone and so on if you're venturing to some zone that is to high level for you you're going to get your ass handed to you and then you sort of go back to a, an easier zone right so so the linear structure is basically still there it just has the pretense of being uh, an open world and that's sort of uh, not really what i would like to have in an open world right but i still know that there's this problem because if it's just an open world you can uh, explore what why would you go exploring there has to be some kind of purpose right so from a philosophical standpoint this is actually a, a quite an interesting uh, question right why would you go exploring right why why there has to be some kind of incentive you have to there has to be some passion it's like, i want to go there because passion right like a good old david hume would say right so if there's no if there's uh, just you know there's a monster there or there's a dog there or there's an there's a bird there, a dog there, what, whatever, you know, a skeleton there. Why would you go beat it if you couldn't get something out of it? There has to be some kind of incentive. And, and there has to be some kind of story in these kinds of games. And, and one of the, uh, uh, the games that I really like was a game that came out uh, three or four years ago called Kingdom Come Deliverance. Which was actually a role-playing game that is completely devoid of any magical sort of stuff, right? It was set in 1402 in Bohemia and sort of a, a, a clash between the Hungarians and the sort of, uh, you know, a, a part of the Ro uh, Holy Roman Empire. So there's a backstory there. There was a very, very, very strong story, right? But the, the open world elements then became sort of more than a nuisance than, than interesting. So at least to some extent, right? But what really kept me going through that game was the very engrossing story. Or what's it called? Engrossing. It's uh, uh, um, where, where you get sort of caught up in this story. You really want to, you know, experience what will the next step be, right? And and the whole situations, the 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 the, the battles and whatever you were engaged with, was connected to the story in a way that didn't feel. Uh, sort of goofy but really en engaging and I think the point was that this was historically correct at least to a very large extent this game right so if, if uh, and I, I don't know if it's on PC but I suppose it is uh, Kingdom Come Deliverance and but if you you know I play on PlayStation PlayStation 4 I haven't got a 5 yet right so it's um, it's a I can if you want a hardcore old school with a modern touch and a great story, Kingdom Come Deliverance is your go-to game, absolutely. It's still my reference for a great role-playing game, right? It's it's so... Um, there are a few things that are a bit clunky here and there, for sure, absolutely. It's much more smooth, uh, the sort of the, the game mechanics in, in this game, right? So, um, and that's still... Uh, 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 I mean, it's 
it's state of the art gameplay mechanics uh, of role playing games the, uh, the the souls games are really i mean that's the challenge that's what i what i think is interesting about this game it's the game mechanics and how you have to plan your way through how to attack so you don't just you know slash away and then win because you're just you know button smashing right uh, but you really have to play uh, this at, uh, at attempting to just go all in uh, all guns blazing is usually a bad idea right and sometimes I do it because just for the satisfaction of it but uh, usually it's not a good idea you have to plan your step right and that's the whole point of this kind of game this is still state-of-the-art in my opinion right but after all I mean basically it's a good game it's a great game it's a very good game at least right great okay I'm not sure I'm go going with great because it seems they are not really when you get away from the sort of the the, the fancy landscapes that are very pretty and the graphics is uh, decently nice it's not really state-of-the-art graphics at least not uh, in some instances that it's it, there's good uh, some and in sometimes it's very sort of when you go down a dungeon and you know it's sort of uh, it's sort of spooky and so on at times it's a very engaging right but but what really gets me is that it doesn't feel like there's anything new here there's something you can do like you have a, a you know a mount you can re ride a mount and you can jump with it and so on uh, you have sort of a, some something called ashes you have you can uh, you can summon some ghosts and so on right spirits uh, to help you fight a uh, battle and so on these things are all great but it's not something that is particularly new in gaming it's just new within Dark Souls or the Souls series right so it's not really that much of a, a sort of a quantum leap and apart from that there's nothing new exactly right and uh, to be honest where, where the game feels most like Dark Souls like a Dark Souls 4 that's when I think the game is best there's a particular area or, or, or uh, uh, castle called Stormvale Castle which was sort of a brilliantly crafted you know that's what uh, the Dark Souls games are famous for that the, 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 the game design it is the, the 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 passages and the doors and the elevators they all fit together in a certain way so you get sort of a shortcut to the boss and all these things which is sort of a very interesting way of creating and designing the the levels so that you actually want to go explore so you can get to 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 uh, another part or a specific uh, shortcut or something like that right that's one of the founding things in these games that I really really liked when that was quite new in in the way of game uh, level designing right back in, in in 12 years ago or whenever when Dark Souls 1 came out right a really really great game uh, still still a masterpiece in my opinion even if the graphics are a little dated at this point right they made a remaster issue of Dark Souls 1 uh, for PlayStation uh, 4 and 5 um, and I can and I highly recommend it even though it's uh, you have to get used to to, to the game mechanics and, and a, a few things right but um, apart from sort of updated graphics and a few more uh, things you can do with your character and, and, and mounts and so on there's not really that much new and another negative thing is that they are reusing the bosses uh, when you get to, to a boss maybe uh, the, your fourth and fifth or sixth boss you suddenly realize but it's the same kind of boss that than, than the first boss or the second boss and it does exactly the same exactly more or less the same movements and more or less the same looks and then you find out when you uh, get to boss number 15 it was the same as the fifth boss and boss number 21 is the same as so the four or five or six times they reuse the same boss and also uh, there are sort of there there are mines and there are catacombs and there are sort of a third uh, kind of i think uh, sort of larger area sub 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 uh, underground areas right and it's basically more or less the same design 
the same elevator, the same uh, the passages, the same uh, gargoyles uh, are, are, you know, the monsters there, and they are always doing the same thing. They are very predictable uh, in their uh, moving pattern and, and the AI, right? Uh, and one of the things that uh, also Dark Souls games are famous for, and uh, they're, they're trying to surprise you or, or take take the crap out of you by placing some you're sort of oh there's a coffin or you know something i can loot over there then you run there and behind you there's a guy you know uh, you know sticking a spear into your ass and then you die instantly or something like that right this kind of thing is something that the games are famous for it's almost like you have to be a masochist to some to some level to like these kinds of games <laughs> because your ass is getting handed to you you know on a regular basis right but in this game it's like i know that there's going to be a gargoyle behind that corner so i go ahead and then jump back a bit and uh, lo and behold a gargoyle jump, jumps out just like i expected it to be because i know these games now so they're using the same old tricks again as they have done in the other games and now it's just getting a bit old right i i want something new i thought that when they were going to to make a, a, an open world they will sort of start from a clean plate and say okay we will take some aspects of the older games like dark souls but we will create it in another kind of environment and another approach to gaming that sort of a, a sort of a they could still make dark souls 4 and dark souls 5 or bloodborne 2 or whatever right Sekiro 2 or Sekiro 3 they have those games already so I would have thought they would make an, a new kind of uh, approach to, to the game in Elden Ring. But basically it's uh, Dark Souls with a bit of Sekiro and, and a bit of Bloodborne here and there. It's Dark Souls 4 open world. That's kind of disappointing. And they also have this uh, you know, GR uh, Martin, this, uh, you know... Uh, um, What's it called? The the TV series. Um, oh, I forget. Um, game of Thrones. The Game of Thrones guy uh, as a story writer, script writer for the game, right? And I mean, I can't see much of a story there. It's it's sort of the same old, same old goofy, um, uh, sort of cryptic, cryptic role-play game advent uh, fantasy kind of with a bit of uh, Japanese uh, influences it's I don't I don't to be honest I don't give a shit about these weird stories and and all these characters all these things you have to you have to sort of explore to find out basic stuff that I just want to be told this is how you do it I don't want to run around a couple of hours in a zone to figure out if I need that particular loot in order to get some extra thing with my weapon uh, five steps late or something that's just too complicated for me that's my personal opinion and that might not be yours if you like to spend all day looking around for basic stuff that you would need to do some basic things that you might not figure out to need anyway later anyway so so uh, excuse me for babbling a bit there right but <clears throat> it's just um, and I feel it's a bit too much of the same thing, right? It's the first zone is quite interesting, and and Stormvale Castle is great in my opinion, right? Uh, and then uh, the zone north of that gets a little tedious. It's a sort of a swamp or swamp kind of zone, right? Uh, or well, what's it called when it's sort of uh, shallow water, shallow water zone or something like that. Um, and when we get into the real swamp zone, uh, sort of a freaky, uh, nightmarish zone, it's called something like Celia or something, I don't know, Syria, I'm not, I don't remember the names. It gets very weird, big dogs and big birds, on, and it's sort of weird, kind of, just to, uh, to say, how, what kind of zone can we have here? What I would have liked, it was the same kind of, of, um, uh, sort of biology every, everywhere 
and then there would be some that one might be a little swamp that was slightly different there might be a mountain region that was slightly different but it was still the basically the same uh, ecology so to say this thing that now we are passing from you know 100 meters that way all of a sudden it's a lava zone right that's sort of too old school i need something that is more cohesive to to have a connection with it otherwise it just feels like um, a linear game stitched together as an open world game right so it's like um, I'm I'm sort of I'm I like the game I like it it's it's fun to a quite a large extent to play but there's some sort of cornerstones I had expected more of it and 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 these uh, sort of repeating the same boss five or six times repeating the same dungeon or, or cavern uh, f ten times with the same kind of monsters and the same kind of structure and it just gets then it's sort of we, we have not enough ideas to create a, a game this large so we just have to repeat the same thing over and over and over again right and uh, there's also sort of a, a, a problem with some uh, of the bosses where they you can fight them, but if you try to drag them out of a particular uh, sort of um, a radius, they will sort of disappear and jump back to where they started and start walking around there as if nothing had happened. That's not exactly what I would call open world, is it? As I understand, that would be because they, they, they want to keep the character not running all around the zone so that there's some sort of a programming of of the stuff right that that if you're dragging it too far away from where it's supposed to be if the game wouldn't work or something like that it, it's too cumbersome to create a game where you can drag the characters far away from the starting point right but then the the whole open world idea just falls apart to me right i want to be able to do that and if you can't create that make it a linear game make the best dark souls four uh, level structured game that you can possibly make and make some interesting challenging bosses and interesting challenging level designs and so on that really that just gives you what you want in a dark souls game right i mean why not i'm i mean i don't i want more of the same i would like a dark souls 4 actually more than this open world sort of half ass open world uh, dark souls game I'd, it's just like they want to they're, they're chewing on more than they're biting more than they can chew or whatever it's called right they want it to be everything at once and it just they are only 80% home right even if they get a 9 out of 10 or 10 out of 10 or maybe across the board in the reviews I think uh, the first sort of the first impression of the game is it it's quite impressive but when you sort of get used to it that impressive and that starts to fade a bit right now mind you i have maybe played like 40 percent or 50 percent of the game i'm not really sure how big it is right and um so there, there might be something happening in the, in the second half of the game that might turn me over a bit right but Judging from what I've seen so far, uh, it doesn't quite cut cut to its uh, its uh, ambition, the, its level of ambition. It doesn't it doesn't got it right. Uh, it's a great game. No, it's it's. I would I would even hazard a guess or hazard a, a, a statement that it's sort of the state of the art of open world at uh, fantasy role-playing games I, I i never understood the sort of the uh, the popularity of this uh, Wick, uh, witcher 3 game i thought it was i like the witcher 1 and 2 better than that one uh, the first ones i think i played the witcher 1 all through and and the second one some of it right the third one was sort of it just felt weird this it just felt weird I, I didn't get I didn't it didn't get to me right and um, it's also these uh, uh, fantasy games then you have to get into a new law and then you uh, new characters that are all the, all this same old goofy 
fantasy, you know, Gandalf uh, speaking, talking like Gandalf, talking this cryptic, oh, you are the chosen one, and all that bullshit, right? It just gets tiring, right? I, do, I don't I don't bother with this kind of law stories. I don't care, to be frank. I want a story where I feel that I am actually kind of creating that story. I don't want the story handed to me. Oh, you're the chosen one. Go over there and do this, right? Uh, and that's what the game like Kingdom Come Deliverance, which if you really want a great, great story, right? That's the game to go to, right? And I would actually say, even if if the game mechanics of a game like Kingdom Come is, is a sort of second rate compared to to Elden Ring, Kingdom Come Deliverance is the better game because of its story. There isn't actually anything to hang your hat on story-wise in Elden Ring so far in my opinion, right? It's all sort of scattered uh, information here and there and you have to piece it together in your head. I simply can't be bothered with that, right? So there are so many sort of I like that there's something you can discover, but what they tend to do in the Dark Souls game and have gone overboard in this one, I believe, is they are just scattering what you otherwise would just be handed because you need that kind of information, right? It's just scattered and it become more cryptic and harder to find. It's just become more cumbersome. And that's, when you do it right, it's interesting. When you do it wrong, you're basically annoying the player more than you may and you know uh, when for this uh, umpteenth time you are sort of um, uh, one hit uh, from from the back without knowing there was some guy there um, uh, with, a, with a big axe chopping your head up in one slice right uh, for the uh, you know 50th time it, it it's not like you're saying wow what a great game you're saying oh god damn it man now I lost all my whatever right now I had to spend another 10 minutes to get back to just where I was before and this is actually sort of it has what was sort of a, a selling point of the game has now become something of an annoying thing this it's more a game where you fight against being forced down in the mud trying to crawl out to get back to where you were before you were pressed down in the mud, right? Rather than starting from here and then working to become better, you're constantly be pushed down in the mud and trying to crawl out of the mud. And when you have a success feeling, it's when you're saying, aha, this time I wasn't pushed down in the mud, right? That gets a little annoying to me in the long run. If the whole game in 100 or 120 hours, or 150 hours, is you just trying to crawl out of the mud every time you're getting pushed down in the mud, it gets a little like, uh, you know, I guess it's a kind of a millennial thing, right? They know that the, the welfare state is sort of pushing them down in the mud and they're used to just be, it's a success when you avoid being, uh, you know, the, your teachers get angry at you or something like that, right? So I, I can't help thinking that there's some psychology in game development in recent years where it says a challenge has become something like, well, you, despite being pushed down in the shit, you crawled out of it and survived, right? That's a great, uh, that's uh, something to be proud of. But I'm more like, well, if I'm at, at zero, I want to go to 10 rather than having a game where I'm pushed down to minus five and then trying to avoid it next time and crawl out to zero again, right? So it's like, um, it's a, I want the more positive feeling rather than constantly avoiding a negative. So it's just, um, I know it's a, sort of a part of the Dark Souls game, but it has just become a little old to me, right? I, I need a bit more like challenges uh, where, where I can feel that I'm, I'm, a, you know, I'm doing something, creating something that is actually sort of spectacular, right? I'm doing something more than just zero or getting back to zero, right? Getting up to zero again. So the other, the other thing is that it, it's sort of what can you do in a game to make it challenging rather than 
just pushing people down in the shit as uh, uh, the Souls games do all the time. So I had hoped for something more than that, but it's just sort of a Dark Souls open world times four, or something. Dark Souls times four in an open world, right? And in the long run, I think I'm going to. It, I'm, it's not going to be a game that I'm possibly going to go back to very much. I'm considering ditching Elden Ring at this point and going back to sort of playing Dark Souls again, right? Even though it's, it's been a couple of years since I did last time. But I like these games, this game so much because it's so simple, but there's so much gameplay in that simplicity. And that kind of simple gameplay has been eliminated a bit in these uh, in this Elden Ring that has become sort of all these uh, modifications of your weapon and all. It's just too much. I like the simplicity of having only a few weapons and a few potions and it's the gameplay itself that makes it fun to play, right? And I don't really feel that with this Elden Ring. It's sort of very ambitious and it can really live up to its high ambition. So these are my thoughts. Like, share, subscribe and uh, consider a donation. Check out the Discord server. Um, there are a lot of guys discussing all sorts of interesting stuff there. Otherwise, have a nice day. See you next time.